Good evening, everyone. It's a vesper time in Odom Sokisli Church, Bangkok, Thailand. I want to thank the Lord for giving me opportunity to speak before you and to bring message of hope, inspiration, and above all, to strengthen our faith. I want to thank Melz Biana for inviting me. I want also to thank the opportunity given to me by their church pastor, the son of my good friend, Dr. Alfredo Agustin, Jen Neven Agustin, and the church members who are Bisaya, Tagalog, Ilongo, Ilocano, and others. In this Bispers program, I have two important questions. They are related. Two related greatest questions in a Christian life. One, what must I do to be saved? Second, what good thing shall I do that may, ha may have eternal life? My brothers and sisters, these two questions should always be in front of us because these questions led us into our sure destiny. The message is presented to you by End Time Sanctuary Present Truth Ministry. That's my ministry. Because you want to be have an introduction, I want to introduce myself, I'm Dr. Rico Taga Habien. I'm working in the Adventist University of the Philippines. I am the chair of theology and all personal care in the College of Medicine. I am the professor of Center for Graduate Studies, the Amy and a PhD level. And also, I'm a professor in the College of Theology, undergraduate. My family, education, and work is as follows. My wife is Ruth Pakatang Parinho Habien. I have two children, Rex Sabien and Ritz Sabien. They have already done their college. My boy completed his B, uh, B V, C, D, E, and my daughter, Debco, and B, S, N. My education, I started and finished my EB theology at Mountain View College. I finished my M.E. and Ph.D. in the Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies. I work in South Philippine Adventist College as a chair and professor of theology department for seven years. I was also working as a vice president for student affairs for nine years, a district pastor, a church pastor of Northeastern Mindanao Mission, Dabao Mission and Southern Mindanao Mission. Let me go to the question. Are you certain with your destiny? On sa gyud kasi goro ang inyong destination sa kinabuhi. Human ining kinabuhi a. Because Jesus tells in Matthew 7, 13 to 29, that there are only two choices, either going to heaven or going to perdition. And speak it to the people of God, not outsider, not those who claim that they are people of God. Kung sige, sulti ni Jesus, two kinds of road, the narrow and the broad, two kinds of trees, the good and the bad, two kinds of doer, the doers of God's will and the doers of their own will. Two kinds of builder, the wise and the foolish. Did you seriously examine in the end of life and end of the world, you are in which side of God? I'm asking serious question because many Adventists today are not really serious in their religious life. I'm not telling you are. But if you are, Open your mind. 
In the beginning, human choice or decision has eternal consequences. We have the two trees in the Garden of Eden. Because human choice, the gift of God, the most beautiful, exquisite gift of God, yet we can use this gift against our Creator. Before sin, so wala pang kasalanan, everything man can do is God glorifying and God placing. After sin, we lost all of those. So, either we have the curse or the blessing, life and death, creator's will or our own will. There is no other, no neutral. Pareha ba itong insect? Gipangutahan na siya sa so, nag-Bible study sa, so, oh insect, asa man ka? Sa langit o sa imperno? Tinatanong, oh ikaw insect, saan ka papunta? Sa langit o sa imperno? Ang tubag sa insect, dili ko maadto sa imperno, di po ko maadto sa langit, dito ko sa crossing kay guwapo ang negosyo. There are so many Christians who stay in the crossing. The earth is a crossing between heaven and hell. Did you follow the prescribed will in the worshiping of our Creator? Look at this crude illustration. Cain offering was rejected. Abel offerings was accepted. What's the difference? These two persons represent two kinds of people in the end time. Those who worship the true God and those who worship the false God. But today we cannot distinguish that. Hindi na ito may ilan kinsa lang itong tinood. Kinsa itong dili tinood. Nga naman, pareha lang. Pareha sa gisulti ni Jesus. Sa Mateo 25. Wise and foolish virgins. They are all virgins, but there is a tag. Hashtag wise. Hashtag foolish. But while they are still there, they are all virgins. But when the crisis come, we know who are foolish and who are the wise. We live in a world God's ideal and human realities. God's ideal is the narrow way. The good tree. Obey God's will. Wise builder. The reality of human life is that we have difficulty in staying always in God's sight. Ideals. Muna ang problema. We backslide and walk as if the two decisive action of life We think we can mix together. Then walk in God's ideals and for many times in human ideals as a result, we are the miscellaneous. Mga kaigsunan, siguro ano ito? Ang atong paglakaw. Naabata sa dalan. Nga api, malisod. Jesus declared it decisively in Matthew 7.21. Not everyone who said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Jesus is speaking this Language and these words, decisive words to God's people, not outsider, not the, those outside the Gentiles. It was spoken to his people that who was longing to see him for millennium for him to come. Ang problema na ito kay kining teksto, gigamit na ito para sa uban. You need to look at it carefully. Mga kaigsunan, niyata sa pandemic karon, 
we attend physical and virtual worship. Okay. And in fact, the sermon, this whisper, is virtual. My question is, are you really worshiping or this just to entertain your curiosity who is Mr. Habien and what is his message? Because many Christians today attend church to entertain, to be entertained, rather than worshiping in that true spirit, in spirit, in truth, and holiness. Matuta sa simbahan? Walay sulod. Human sa simba? Walay sulod. Nganuman? Aten lang. Killing the time, not getting spiritual food for the week. That's the reason why I use this illustration. Postcard. This is very crude illustration. But I use it as a reality. Ngunuman, mato kita sa supermarket. Postcard na to empty. Puno. Pero nga naman sa simbahan, wala'y sulod. Pag ato ay sulod, pag uli wala'y sulod. How do I know that? Kadaghan ako nag nagwali. And then, nagipangutana. Kumusta man ang wali? Ay, guwapo ka, istanan. Unsa lagi, ahambot lang to, basta kay guwapo. Mauna, wala'y sulod. Kung naapay sulod, na kay konsumo ng espirituhanon sulod sa osa kasimana. So parihatay ng tanong. Look at this. Tingnan yun itong halaman na ito. Walang tubig, walang pagkain, walang sustansya, walang vitamina na lanta na. That's our spirituality when we go to church, attend church, midweek, bisper, sabat, iway fellowship and then we bring our postcard empty and we go home empty is dangerous i call it maintenance christians come to church empty sit talk listen after church service going home empty as if worship service is to entertain the presence is for attendance These Christian worshippers are in the broad road, bad trees, foolish builders doing their own will. This is hard things, but this is reality. Many Seventh Adventist Christians are not seriously dead with their spiritual life, living as if God would accept sloppy service, worldly, not totally converted, living a life of a Christian just for maintenance. Status of being a Christian. These are the situation or the spiritual condition of many of God's people throughout the whole world. What's the world? The signs of the times. Observe closely the movements of political, religious, economic, business, education, military, and many others in many parts of the world. We are in the stupendous time of the end. The clock of the world's provision keep on ticking towards its close. So with individual provision coming to an end in any time that we do not really know. Wata ka balok ano sa musira ang kaluhasan? Sige lang yung mga mangandam tas pagbalik sa ginoo. Ang pagbalik sa ginoo, important ting pangandaman. Pero ang mas importanting pangandaman ang pagsira sa atong kaugalingong kaluwasan kay wata kabalo nga og mawala na ta. Kinabukasan wala na tayo. I do not know whether I'm alive the next few hours after this presentation. That's the most serious of all. That's the most serious. That's the most urgent. The tip of the night. The closing of our own personal probation sudden unprecedented events like accident, sudden lethal illness, victims of natural and man-made disasters. It's a high time to make our own relationship to God straight. 
Be there ready at any time, watching, waiting, working for the Lord. I've been watch, I've been a church pastor in the Walwal in Dabao Del Norte. There were I was a church pastor and I went to the barangay. Gitana na ako pila ka membro ng Adventista misaka sa di Walwal. Ang listahan dito is 100,000 plus. Pero ang manimba kapin lang sa usa ka gatos. Why? In that place hundreds and hundreds died. Natabunan sa pagkuha og bulawan. Many died in the name of gold rather than in the name of God. Serious time to prepare for the coming world crisis. Jesus provided enough signs and warning his last events messages to prepare for his coming. In Matthew, he gave more space and time for personal preparation compared to the signs and warning of the end of the world. Pila ka versikulo. Pero ang warning para mangandam, faithful and able servant, the wise and foolish virgins, okay, handling the time, the talents and the treasure, the sheep and the goats. Huge space has been used so that we will not be deceived, so that we can prepare. Cunning, faithful, evil, wise, and foolish, sheep and goats. When there was no crisis, there is no distinct difference as of now, because who served really God genuinely? Only in the time of the end when true worshippers are separated from a false or pretender worshippers in the God of heaven. Did you give serious consideration which class do you belong in the end? What quality of personal preparation you have done? Don't miss the opportunity or regret forever and loss forever. It is either you are a wise or foolish builder. We are building something for eternity. It is our home. In our home, in our work, and everywhere we are, we are what we are building for. What are the materials and quality? Can it stand on fire? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3.13, Each one's work will become clear for that they will declare because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. Those things we built will tell the quality, durability, if we are a wise builder, as we are involved in the building of the kingdom of God. Always remember our Laodicean spiritual condition. We are not Laodicean church. But we have the spiritual illness of the last church on earth. Ellen White says, we are 70 Adventists. Are we ashamed of our name? We answer, no. It is the name the Lord has given us. But the message of Laodicean is applicable to 70 Adventists who have a great light and have not walked in that light. It's a very sad comment. We have the greatest light, but we are not walking in the light. Meaning to say, we work in darkness, and darkness in the Bible is a symbol of no presence of God, but the presence of the prince of the darkness. Seventh-day Adventist Church has no equal biblical beliefs, health messages, educational and health institution, publishing houses. The only church that can depend in public what we stand for. But in lifestyle and practice, we come short of the glory of God. Short of His ideals. Because we're not walking in the light. Ellen White says we are in the things in the world shows that troubled times are right upon us. Men have become infantuated with vice. What you can see in television, anywhere, radio, all communication. 
vice, and every species of evil prevails. Everything in the world is in agitation. The signs of the times are ominous. Coming events cast shadow before. And the Spirit of God is withdrawing from earth. And calamity follows calamity by sea and land. There are tempests and earthquakes, fires, flood, murders of every grade. There are those who are watching and waiting and working for the Lord. Yet there are others who are under the, la under the general generalship of the first apostate. Few believe with heart and soul that we have a hell to shine and a heaven to win. Crisis is stealing upon us. Men are still drinking. Place your lovers. Continue crowding. The highest excitement prevails if probation's hour is past closing and every case is about to be eternally decided. Maranatha 25. Did you remember? Nainuduman niyo itong isulti ni Jesus. Wake up! Pagmata na! Jesus warns. Luke 21, 34. But take heed yourself. Lace your hearts be way down. Carousing, drunkenness, cares of this life. And that they come on you unexpectedly. For it will be, it will come as a sneer of all those who dwell on the world. Jesus says, Grabe! Drunkenness na hubog sa panginabuhi. I thought drunkenness should not be the vocabulary of Jesus because he was speaking to his disciples. Not outsiders. They are not drunkards. But there is a drunkard, drunkenness in the church that is so dangerous rather than those who drink liquor. The cares of life. Magpaubo sa ato. Ogun niya pagabot niya itong adlawa. O sa kalitag. Because that would be a litag throughout the whole world. In Noah's time, people invested their everything for rainy seasons. For rainy days. Ah, naata na. Meron tayo niyan today. Di ba? Oh, mag-ipon tayo. Kasi for the rainy days. That mentality is not in my vocabulary ever since I become a student. Because I have nothing for rainy days. And so people say, let us reserve. Mag-ipon, magpondo, magtago for the rainy days. That's the mentality of people the time of Noah. And what they got? It's not only rainy days. Flood that destroy all. Sure enough, rainy days they had that. Sweep away and lost forever. But Noah, all he possessed, he invested in the ark. Such kind of faith. Wala pa yung ulan dito, wala pa yung usaka patak. Because nature was so balanced. But human, the wickedness in the entire earth is irreparable. My question, what are you investing? Where are you investing all your positions? To the temporal or to the eternal which is worth of all investment? Where do you invest your time, your energy? Your strength for temporal, they are good, but they are not good enough. Ellen White said long ago that God's people should invest in the bank of heaven. Adventist Home 397. In other writings, Ellen White says, The saddest truth as revealed to her by God. But many issues that they dare not to trust the bank of heaven. Christian service 151. Is that true today? Where are you investing? I'm asking. Deception for people of God in the last days. As the people of God approach the peril of the last days, 
Ellen White had shown in a vision. Satan holds earnest consultation of his angels. Just imagine if there are seven billions population in the world. That's also the number of his evil angels to tempt everyone if possible to destroy. So he got a consultation with his angels as to the most successful plan of overthrowing their faith. Because he see popular churches already lulled and sleep by his power, placing supertry, lying wonders, and he can continue to hold them in his control. Look at what other churches, worldly, just like our church. Therefore, he directs his angel, slay, snare, lit ag, especially those who are looking for the second advent of Christ and endeavoring to keep all the commandments of God. Says the deceiver, watch those who are calling attention of the people to the Sabbath of Jehovah. They will lead many to seek claims of the law of God, and the same light reveals the true Sabbath and also the ministration of Jesus in heavenly sanctuary. And shows that the last work of man's salvation is now going forward. Hold the minds of people in darkness till the work is ended and we shall secure the world and the church also. Just imagine that. Our enemy is not sleeping with his millions and millions and millions of angels so that we will be deceived. But we are not studying how to become strong. Endure in the end. He studied everything we have from our eating and sleeping and business and what we like. He's studying how to deceive us and yet we are not studying his tactic, his method, how to deceive us. Be exceedingly careful, brethren. Before proceeding to the extreme measure, Ellen White says, she said that Satan says, we must exert all our wisdom subtly, salimbo, to deceive, to ensnare to those who honor the true Sabbath. We can separate many from Christ by worldliness, lust, pride. They may think themselves safe because they believe the truth. But indulgence of appetite, or the lower passions which confuse judgment and destroy discrimination will cause their fall. So, worldliness, pride, because they believe. Appetite. And Satan say, go! Tell his angels, make the possessors of the land and money and drunk with the cares of this life. Wow, that's the statement of Jesus. Hmm? Make possessions of land and money drunk with the cares of this life. Present the world before them in the most attractive way, light, and they may lay their treasure here and fix their affection upon the earthly things. Are you already in these snares, in this deception? Are these things above, are in your own lifestyle as an Adventist? Decide now. It's not yet late. Jesus is insistently knocking our close, hardened hearts due to the power of sin and influence of the world. My brothers and sisters, Christian life is an intense struggle, not relaxation. Paul says that the Christian life is an instant fight, a struggle. Christian life is not a picnic party. We need to finish the race, keep the faith, the saving faith until the end. 1 Timothy 4, 7. In our walk with the Lord, we may fall. But the promise is, as King Solomon declares in Proverbs 24, 16, a righteous man will fall seven times and rises again, but the wicked just fall. Rise again. How many times you have fallen time to return to the Lord? King David assures us 
that the righteous, according to Psalm 37, to, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hand. This is our hope. This is our assurance. This is our encouragement in the battle of the Christian life. Besides, ang atong mga kaaway, ang atong mga kalaban, we cannot win with our own wisdom, knowledge, and everything. It's only the strength of the Lord. The psalmist says, Psalms 28, 7, The Lord is my strength, my shield, my heart trusted in Him. I am helped, therefore my heart greatly rejoices with my song and I will praise. The Lord is my strength and my song. That's my favorite psalm. We cannot. Our devil is, our devil enemy is so strong. But yet, they are defeated enemy. God is more powerful. God is more powerful. God loves this church. The only good in Laodicea, church of Laodicea, is that Jesus loved this church. The only church that Jesus is outside. The six churches Jesus was inside. There were good commendation, but this church, nothing. Nothing good except Jesus loved this church. That's why I cannot go to any other church because there's nothing. This is the only church in the last days that Jesus loved. But he is outside. Let's look at our spiritual condition. Revelation 3 verse 15. I know your works. You are neither cold or hot. I wish you could be cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Do you like that picture? Kasukaong ka? Nasusuka ka na? Ang Diyos, parang isusuka na tayo. Walang lasa. Nakasira. Why? Cold, give us something. Hot, give us something. But lukewarm, especially spirituality, is not. Because, what's the evaluation of Laodicea? I am rich. I become wealthy. I have need of nothing. Ay, grabe ka, hamburgero. Dato, nagkadunahan, wala na kong magkinahanglan. This is our condition, pride because of something that is not lasting, only temporal and enduring. I can find that anywhere. This is my house, this is my apartment, this is my land. I keep quiet because I have nothing. God's evaluation. And do not know, you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. My brothers and sisters, this is our condition. Coming to church, empty. Going home, empty. Wretched, miserable, poor, blind. Not getting. What a self-deception. Laodicean has been this thinking race in the world's material, but poor, utterly destitute of spiritual and heavenly materials. The only true riches is found only in Christ, in Christ's love. That's why Jesus says, I counsel you to buy me gold that is genuine faith, the true will refined by fire, that you may be rich with white garments because the righteousness of Christ is the only righteousness that is our passport to the kingdom of heaven. Because Isaiah 64 says, our righteousness is as filthy as rocks. Sama sa trapo. Modesty aside sa mga babae. Women. You know, in Hebrew it says, Begit idim. Meaning, a cloth that is used by women in their monthly cycle. That's our righteousness. And yet we say, I need nothing. We lost spiritual discernment. Eyes help. Spiritual medicine. But I love, I rebuke and chasten. I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him, dine with him, and he will be with me. 
After church, our spiritual container must be full for week's provision. If we go to our market, bring your basket, bring your bag, you fill it. Why not do it, church, in spiritual things? Para parihata sa tanong ba? Nga tambok. Buhi, lunhaw. Muna gingon dito sa salmo. God's people are compared to productive trees. Psalm 1 verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and brings forth each season whose leaves shall not wither and whatever he does, he prosper. Psalm 92 verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They will bear fruit in old age and they shall be fresh and flourishing. Not maintenance Christians, but live, exciting, productive, even old, refreshed. Its members continue to flourish. They are planted in the house and the courts of God. I like that. The question, are you planted in the house of the Lord? Are you flourishing in the courts of God? Or you are flourishing in the world? Let's look at palm trees. Palm trees is productive. In Israel, I went to Jericho. Jericho in Hebrew means the city of palm because at the time, the best palm in the world is found in Jericho. Productive for 100 years. And you know, it is a desert. It will survive. Not destroyed by harsh environment. And God is using that as symbol of his, God, his people. Are you a palm tree planted in the house of the Lord? Palm tree is a source of economic value. Oil, flourishing, tall, upright. Symbol of victory. Grow 40 to 80 feet base in the desert of Jericho. According to Deuteronomy 30, 34 verse 3. It has religious significance. It lives carry in the face of tabernacles. A palm tree produced in 100 is productive in 100 years. It produced three tons of oil. It is not affected by any hard season of environment. The symbol of God's people, flourishing even their own. So the question, are you planted in the house of the Lord? Or just an ornamental tree, dwarf bonsai, in the house of God, in the courts of God? It's time to go home. To our real home. We find our creator who places us on earth. Really. Sidar. Sidar tree is famous in Lebanon. Used in the sanctuary. In the building in Israel. It lives 400 to 600 years. That's why I'm asking. Are you a cedar tree or are you papaya? Planted in the courts of God. This has economic value not only for housing, furniture, shipbuilding in the ancient world. Towering tree, stately, durable, mighty, loftiness, supremacy. It is one of the strongest durable tree in the world. For it is tested by mighty typhoons and wind coming from Mediterranean. Like our iron word in Surigao. Strong winds and typhoon makes them strong, sturdy, and durable. It is the tempest, the typhoons in life that make us strong in the Lord, not the sweet breeze and quiet and gentle. Siddhar tree is a symbol of God's righteous people due to the quality, durable characteristic. You might be absorbed in making a living, neglecting the atmosphere, atmosphere preparation. We are in the birds and the three souls of eternity. Are you planted in the courts of God? If you are not, make it sure now. Not tomorrow. May never come. You don't know when we stop to exist. I want to end this sermon. The question we have started. What must I do to be saved? What good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? I want to quote this statement from Ellen White to end this sermon. The power of higher, purer, nobler life is our need. 
The world has so much of our thought. The kingdom of heaven too little. Is that true? Think of your hours. When you woke up until the time you sleep, how many percentage belongs to the Lord? Why not invest? So the answer of the questions are all found in Jesus' illustration. Stay in the narrow road. Come with me. Walking in the other way is hopeless. Produce good fruits in life, good works, and Christ-like character because they are the surest indication of genuine relationship to Christ. Be a wise builder, not foolish. What you build that will not be destroyed by vicissitudes of life. Always think and act that you have a part in building of the kingdom of God. Lastly, do God's will. Not our earthly will. Only those who will follow God's will surely will go to heaven. May this Bisper's message will open our eyes where we are in the stream of time where it is so serious for us. And I hope that what we share, what we learn and study this evening, this whisper, would open our minds, spiritual eyes, to see the real things that the world is coming to an end. History is coming that God will put a period on it, and then we go to his kingdom. It is my prayer that each of us this evening will renew our commitment, dedication, and loyalty, and we do God's will by all means, because that's the surest way we will be in heaven. This is my prayer.